The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Ah, hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. As you can see, I'm making some more improvements to my steampunk outfit. We've also gotten further with the Persistence of Vision display. In this episode, we're going to finish it up and see if it works. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Okay, we're back with the Persistence of Vision build. This is Felix. He's been helping us for a while on the show behind the scenes and uh, he's gonna help me put this mount together. Of course this motor is right in the way of the screws. Why wouldn't it be? I think one way to go about this is maybe just start in one corner mm -hmm. with these brackets mm -hmm. and then see how it rotates. That way we don't bind it up all at once. That way we can find the, basically the most overall loose position if that makes any sense. Yeah. Slide this back over. See if I can get around the motor. I think that's Murphy's Law. There's always something in the way of something else. Any project you make. It's like taking apart a car. You had to take apart 10 things to get at the fuel pump or whatever. All right, let's see how we're doing. Do we have a power supply we could bring over here? Maybe actually get it revved up? You know, get it up to speed? Thanks, High Sight Corporation. <laughs> awesome. Does it have a plug in it? It probably does. Today's episode, Ben tries to figure out how to open a box. I was supposed to give these to Andrew, but I forgot. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, that's a neat little power supply. How many watts is it total? About 250? 287. That's not bad. Eh, let's see, I'm gonna cut the most useless plug, which would be this old floppy drive plug. Thanks, Felix. Well, I'll just guess. A PC power supply can be a great bench power supply. They've actually got a pretty good amount of juice. Juice, that's like 1950s term. It's like, man, my car's got a lot of juice, man. Let's go drag racing. All right, um, you start it up. Are you ready? Yep. All right, oh. I was gonna say. Yeah, you have to keep it on there. So this thing doesn't blow up. Ready? Yeah. Oh, that was a little too much for this supply. We're gonna have to find something bigger. See, it shorted it out. Felix disassembled the uh, trigger mechanism for the drill, and we found a 555 timer. Beauty! <laughs> there appears to be a resistor ladder in here, so. The more you pull this trigger, it probably changes a PWM pulse coming off of the 555, which drives this power MOSFET, which actually controls the motor. And we looked this MOSFET up, was it 60 amps? Yeah. Super beefy. So just to be safe, we're going to hook this up as is to our drill so we can, you know, be safe. Safety. Safety first. Before, after, and during safety. <laughs> That's why we never drink on the job. Come on, get in there. Hey, you know what we could do? We could um, co-op this circuit. Instead of controlling it with the trigger, we could control it with a microcontroller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Send our own pulses to the MOSFET. All right, so 
Which way did... Oh, it would have had to been that way because it couldn't have been that way. Right? Yeah. I presume. Let's double check just to be sure. So we're thinking the outer one is positive. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Oh, got to get rid of these springs. Hey, look, more springs for the collection. The spring collection, now at JCPenney. <clears throat> yeah, could you put those in my spring bucket, please? Wait, there's one more. Under that Timex Sinclair, or I'm sorry, under that ZX Spectrum. <laughs> it says ZX. Oh no, I'm turning British. There we go. I'll wait till Felix get back for the big reveal. That way, right. if anything catches fire, you can help put it out. All right, so we have the drill pretty much hooked back up. Let's see what happens. Oh man, that takes a lot of juice. It's already getting weak, see that? It's like we're trying to drill through granite. Uh, let's, try, let's grab that battery off of that one, see if it's got any more juice. Let's wear down this battery. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Okay, that one's got more charge. <laughs> Kind of running out of hands. If only I was Doc Ock, then I would have the power of the sun in the palm of my hand. I guess I could just touch it. Hmm. <laughs> I got an extra hand, I guess. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, what are doing? Yeah, keep that on the fat. There we go. It's like Twister. You ready? Yeah. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, ten, one thousand. Up a little bit. It's actually a little bit below the beam. Oh, it's mm -hmm. still room temperature. Well, actually, that's above room temperature for this place, <laughs> but still pretty good. Yeah, maybe we should just co-op this circuit, you know, mm -hmm. just bypass the 555 and put our, yeah, just put our own pulses into the uh, MOSFET. Yeah, then we can change the speed. Yeah, and this, you know, we know the circuit is meant to work with this, this, and that, so mm -hmm. I think that's a, a good safe bet. These batteries have a lot of potential. It's more than you'd think for a cheap, these aren't even, these aren't even lithium ion, these are like nickel metal hydride. All right. Um, well, now that we have our test rig hooked up so we can spin it, let's continue building the frame. Oh, well, it seems like... Ooh, hello. Hold on a second. You know, I always burn myself. It's like, oh, I should see if that's hot or not. And I just stick my hands right in there. I've got this nice fluke IR thermometer. Oh, look, that drill is 70 degrees. But no. And it even has a setting. You can go from Fahrenheit to Celsius in case you travel. Now it's time for a tech timeout. In today's episode, we found a 555 timer in the drill we took apart. The 555 is a classic, widely used integrated circuit that is basically a timer, but it can be used for so many different things. It's just ridiculous. In the drill, it was timing out a square wave with different widths, so pulse width modulation, to change the speed of the drill. Uh, we've used it before on the show to drive servos. You know, instead of needing a microcontroller, you can actually use the 555 with variable input, much like the variable trigger on the drill, to change the width and control a servo. Uh, we use it on our pinball machine, a version of it, to create a watchdog timer. So if the CPU goes down, 
this thing will no longer sound out a pulse and everything will turn off within one second. So the 555 timer gives you a little bit of slop in case something hangs in the program but doesn't completely lock up. So yeah, it's a really useful chip. There's a lot of situations where you might think you need a microcontroller, but you could probably do it with an integrated circuit like the 555. So look up 555 circuit and you might be surprised all the things you can do. When you don't order your parts from Element 14, you have nothing to solder. When you have nothing to solder, you're tempted to use your soldering iron in ill-advised ways. Put your soldering iron to good use by accessing the world's top brands and products at element14.com today. If you hook this up to the scope and find the uh, square wave that's probably coming off the 555, mm -hmm. We can, you know, obviously it'll tell us where to interrupt the circuit. That's so cool, these drills had 555s in them. I feel bad that we took it apart. Well, I guess I still have one. I bet that thing doesn't have a 555. It's like, oh, that is a microcontroller. I'm a fancy drill from the future. Ready for another test? Sure. Okay. You're bolted in, right? Yeah. Hey, we could like put blood in this and like find DNA or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, um, I think this is pretty good. Let's um, let's get the other two corners. I'm gonna tighten these. Oh yeah, you want some Loctite for those? I'll grab it. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry, Permatex thread locker. There you go. Red lock fluid. It's the lazy man's lock nut. This is my favorite bit. I don't know why. I think it's because it's made out of good steel. Oh, I got one. Ooh. Yeah, can you hold that steady, please? Okay. It would help if I was going the right way with the drill. Check how we're doing. Okay, I've got the oscilloscope hooked up to the 555 timer, and we're going to see if we can find the pulses that are actually driving the MOSFET, which drive the motor. Oh, there they are. See how the, the closer they get together, the faster it goes. There, that's pretty steady. Oh, it's gonna fly off the table. <laughs> Anyway, uh, what that shows us is that's the point, the output pin of the 555. If we remove the 555, we can supply our own pulses with a marker controller and control this MOSFET without the trigger. Okay, the unit does a frame, and then in the back half, it doesn't do anything. And then the tab comes down and goes into the opto interrupter and see how that turns off the light? So basically it goes from high to low when it passes through there. And between that, and the speed of the motor, that's how we're going to try to judge where this is in space. Let's do a really quick test to see if we can see the pulses from the opto interrupter on the oscilloscope. Okay, we're Ready? hooked up. Yeah, give it a burst. There's the pulses. Okay, give me another shot. Stop, okay, let's look at it. I have my persistence of vision test jig all set up. Now, we hooked up the opto, and that's so this thing can kind of keep track of what it's doing. Uh, we don't actually have computer control of the MOSFET that's gonna drive the motor. So what the system does is it looks for when the tab hits the opto, and then it waits about 1 60th of a second, and then it starts drawing the frame. You can see it do something here. See when I go past the opto, it flashes. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna have some numbers in memory, binary, zeros and ones, to make an image. And when it sees the tab hit the opto, it will start drawing a frame with a certain amount of space between each line. And the spacing between each line is what will actually create an image. So it'll be like then it'll stop, hit the tab again, and the faster it can clock out the data, 
the smaller the pixels will be vertically. I'm using a Parallax propeller uh, development board here because the propeller is really good at clocking out data at high speeds. It's 80 megahertz with eight cores, so it's really good at audio, video, LED driving kind of things. So what I did on the screen here was I made a big bitmap pattern of zeros and ones. The zeros are the LEDs being off, the ones are the LEDs being on. So I'm going to flash the program to the propeller. The propeller is going to clock the dots through the brushes on this wire right here. Then it also has the opto hooked up as well as the power that's actually driving the LED driver. I have two separate power supplies for that because the LED driver takes a decent amount of juice. And I'm going to run the drill motor. Actually, I can do an example of that right now. So it's going to, so you can do it slowly. But the image won't resolve until you get to the right speed. Time to test this project. We made some PCBs to drive these LEDs. We attached that to a spinning rack with a gear on it. Then we used a microcontroller to send dots through some brushes into the LED drivers. Let's turn off the lights and see if it works. Is there anyone here that wants to communicate? <laughs> Zoinks, there's like totally a ghost. It's pretty consistent. Wow, um, what can I even say about that? Great outfit. I'm ready for the steampunk convention. Indeed you are. So, ah, uh, oh, are those gearings? Yeah, do you like them? Very cool. You can borrow them sometime if you want. Nice, I might have to do that. Well, finally your steampunk outfit is complete. It came together pretty well for what it is, I guess. What are we doing next week? In the next episode of The Ben Heck Show, we're going to give Steampunk a rest and instead work on PC gaming controls, specifically foot pedal controls to augment the Wasad mouse configuration. We'll see you then. Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel, join the Element 14 community, follow us on Twitter, and become our friend on Facebook. I'm all ready for my Bioshock Infinite cosplay. <laughs> Do I have anything to say? Um, <laughs> it'd be like manually move it like an Amish butter churn and... Ah, oh, are those gearing? Oh, you notice these? The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs>